Nick from Long Island. Hey Mike, I'm a PT student in my last year and we are told constantly to treat impairments and dysfunctions that are present in the patient. With that being said, how much weight do you put into the results of your special tests and how do they really help you determine your plan of care for the patient? P.S. Neurobiomechanical gray word. Um, Alright, that was a good question. Alright, so in school they're talking about treating impairments and dysfunctions. Is that what he said? So he's got a question about special tests because I've had a bunch. I, I've actually been putting a bunch of um, videos of special tests that we do here on my social media profiles lately because I literally open up a textbook just like you guys are reading and you open like to the shoulder chapter and there's like 200 special tests. <laughs> Most of them stink. Most of them don't mean anything cl clinical. Most of them aren't really, I don't know, I don't, I don't do them exactly the way the textbooks do. You know, once you have some experience, I think you start realizing that, you know, there's, I don't know, that, that, that you know, the textbooks aren't always written by people that treat people. I don't know. But there's, uh, you know, something along those lines where the special tests where you don't necessarily be ha you have to be comprehensive with everything you do. You just have to do the right ones for the right people. So that being said, yeah, lots of people, most people on Instagram are pretty young clinicians. They chirp at me and kind of say things like, you know, what, you know, why do special tests and stuff like that. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, we all do special tests. Who, who would, who would like to start about the importance of special tests? I mean, I think, I think it kind of depends on the, on what you're looking at. What does the patient come to you for? So say if they have a traumatic knee injury that they just had like a couple days ago, and you do a positive Lockman's positive the anterior drawer, like that's definitely going to influence how I, I uh, treat that patient. I'm probably going to send them to get an MRI if they haven't already. It's a lot of fear you're creating. <laughs> Be careful well, with that. <laughs> yeah, like a, you want to rule out if they tore their ACL, right? So I would put a lot of stock. Blew it into, out. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, you can't say you blew it out. That's so much fear. I, I think I said tore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> put words in my mouth. Now. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I would put a lot of stock in my special tests and I would refer out to get imaging. Right, right. Whereas it's uh, someone with in, in a baseball player with maybe gradual onset of shoulder pain, they've been throwing a ton and I do a lot of special tests and maybe some of them are positive, some of them are negative and it's not really clear what's going on. Like maybe then I'm looking at things that are a little more obvious, like are they stiff, are they weak, things like that. So I think it definitely depends. Sometimes I'll put more stock in special tests, sometimes I'll no, but less stock. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Good, so good first one. Maybe we'll start like a little list there. Point number one is you do special tests to know maybe when to refer to a physician. So orthopedically, you know, a good example, ACL Lockman test. You know, some you know the person sees you first. You know, there's a lot of direct access now. Those types of things. So uh, you want to find a pathology that may require either further diagnostics or maybe evaluation by a physician. That's a great one. Mm -hmm. Who else wants to go? I think I agree. I think the other big one for me is, mo is like exercise modifications. So somebody comes in with a shoulder issue and you're saying, is this supraspinatus, is this biceps tendon, AC joint? I mean, like many different exercises stress different parts of the shoulder or knee or whatever. And if you don't understand what maybe is there one or two big pain generators and you just give them a, a general exercise program, giving someone full cans Right, who has a supraspinatus tendinopathy might be too much for them versus if they have something else, you might get away with that. It's actually really good for them. So I think a lot of times, Dan especially, I've learned a lot of especially like benching variations and pressing variations like stress different parts of the shoulder. So I think that's a huge part for people is educating them on how to modify their workout program around what's the issue and I think that's a big deal. I like that. Yeah. So a lot of people would say, does it matter anyway? Your exercise is the best medicine and stuff like that. But again, yeah. special tests maybe help you identify maybe some exercises to emphasize a little bit more and yeah. some to avoid, yeah. right? Which is a great example. You know, again, maybe I get an example, again, I'm piggybacking off that, is even impingement tests, which are, again, very gross, generic tests. I don't know what they're doing, but if you have a positive, like, kind of near type test and then a positive, and, and a negative Hawkins Kennedy, and vice versa, that tells you a lot yeah. about potentially the structures yeah. that are irritable, right? AC versus yeah. subacromial. Yeah, it could be AC, it could be subacromial, it could be coracochromial arch. You know, you may want to maybe avoid some cross-body movements if it's that versus in that plane. So again, it's it's um, it, it's it's helping you make a better program. 